Hi everyone. So I just got my N5 today, and uh, we want to do it very soon. Anyway, so um, let's unbox it and try to put it together. Excuse me, cat. Okay, so the first thing that happened with this is that it arrived with a damaged box. Not a big deal. Okay, so it may as well damage. But as you can see, it comes less connected, so all is fine inside. No worries there. So the first thing you'll find when taking out the opening the box is the instruction manual for assembly. So like this, there you go. There. And I shall flip through it and see how it goes. So many people have been saying that this is a uh, rather easy to build, very straightforward. So blah blah blah, yada yada, typical things. Okay. Basic part of the printer, how it goes together, frames, partless two lists. Okay, two lists. So it says it needs some tools, which is awesome because well, you need to build it properly. And if I understand properly. They are included inside, so let's see if you can find those as well. So we need to go through these part lists, should find everything. Okay. As you can see, I will have the help of our wonderful cats. You can quite help. We'll see. Okay, so let's the part first. Okay, the top layer we have the screw monitor, plasticky, cheap motor, the usual, and special here, step motors. So there it goes. Second thing on the top shelf is Ender 5 display, which should be the same one as Ender 3, if I'm not mistaken. I might as well try to check the sticker there in the back. Mm. And that's it for the top layer. So we can continue then. Further in, so you can see it's nicely packed. Yeah, look at stuff. And here we have the X axis, there you can see, end stop, spatial again, that's right, end stop, end spatial, typical little motor, dual rails, and yeah, it feels nice, yeah. I mean, this is my third 3D printer, but the first time I bought one as a kit, brand new. So let's just put this aside so the cats can't get it because they are monsters. As anyone with a cat will know. So here it goes. And there's all the cat in it. It's not out of frame, but it's how it is. So it's live stream, first unboxing. Oh yeah. If you're enjoying that's great. Get them all my own. You're not just running my own. More packaging. So what's under here now? So we have the top frame, well first is the bed, the heated bed, which looks flattish enough, we'll see, a little bit later, nice amount of the bed. And uh, I'll leave you sure. Do not touch the heated bed. Okay, so behind it, if you want to see it behind. Oh, sorry, frame it drop. Yeah, I need more light. Oh, wait. Okay, so next up in here is the top frame. Which is. Packed in here quite tightly. Uh, okay, so here it is. Ooh, nice and smooth. Uh, it's 
Wobbly, wibbly. And this is... Oh, yeah. It's tightening, but hey. Better for it to come tight, loose than tight. Because we've probably heard of our places that the wheels get bent or they end up with a dent in them. So, okay, that's it for the second layout. Yep, go this. And this is where our cats are going to get in the way, so. Like that. Yeah. Okay, oh, look, here it is. PLA, 200 grams, 1.75, so in white, nothing special, hopefully it's decent enough to actually work. So yeah, we'll put some here. Okay, next up we have... Let's see. Yeah, okay, there you go. So, put this here. So, so what's in this box? We shall see it now. Okay, oh cable okay. well, power cables. Oh look. So it comes with the European European cable, standard IEC, usual and power ratings, it says sixty lamps. Uh, came out, so you know, yeah. and then you have the UK plug fused, and this one has nothing special. Oh, okay, this one's got safety mark, no, no, really. safety mark, okay, fused. Get something out of the way. Another UK socket plug. Kill. Okay. What else is in here? Okay, more in here. Actually, let's put this down for a minute, and we will take out the actual bottom frame. Okay, so this is what mm, Sheet metal. Feet. Well, hard plastic, hard rubber, soft plastic hard rubber, whatever, power switch, uh, and the voltage, and the voltage switch is in here, so, it's in there, make sure it is set for the voltage in your region, so here this is Europe, we use 240, 220, 230, you know, more or less. And as a switching power supply, it will handle 50 hertz, 60 hertz quite nicely. Okay, so basic instruction from here to how to build it. If you want to have a look at it, that's Mr. Wires, the usual. So here you go. There you go. Focus, focus, yeah, it's focusing. Yeah. Black. Okay. Well, we'll see how these compare later on with the instruction manual, which has a pin as well. And this task is nice and dangerous. Cat out of the way. Okay. Cats. So. Okay. So. This this monster is Nico. That monster is Taco. And then there's another monster that's just watching the TV. So he's fine there. What else is in here? Okay, we have one, two, three, four, twenty-four T extruded. They call this extrusions? Yeah, extrusions. Okay. Profiles, aluminum profiles. What? Nicely wrapped. Look, okay. Okay. And that's it. So yeah, it's, well, it's got my little details, it's a bit compacted, it's, you know, nice and compact. Okay, as you can see, as before, we have this in the top box, we go through, 
are protected. And if I remember correctly, there was another. Okay, here it is. There you go. Uh, yeah. So here is another one. This is just a little dent much. And if we look in here, you can see it. Here. Okay, here it is. And it's not coming through yet. And if it did, it doesn't matter much because we have plenty of foam around it. So, let's start putting things back in here and open them up as we need them according to the instructions. I have a in the frame first, so... What the hell is this? Oh wait, hang on. Which one more thing? Get that way. More boxes, let's go over that. And we shall continue with this nice little box in here. So what do we have in here? Okay, then, so we have a bag, a guarantee card, and in this bag we have fittings, and this is probably for the Philip holder, uh, micro SD reader, USB, and screws, lots of screws, nice metal screws. Analyzed in black and silver. What else is in here? Oh, here tools. So we have nice little tools here. Well, nice. You know, nice. What comes as a free tool set? It's considered nice because it's free. Free. And it's as nice as it gets. So, yeah, don't expect much of it. I'm going to use these, see how far it takes me. And if I get frustrated, then I'll get some tools. So there's this colored thing, I'm not sure what it is yet. Tools, spanners, allens, zip ties, foam. Oh, it comes with a needle. A needle to actually clear the nozzle. That's nice. I picked up a hundred of them somehow by accident. Ah, look at here. And look at here. This is the. Fill and holder, remove the frame, and this is somehow here. Right, it's not going to head off else. We shall pull the instructions. And a little spatula called Wuma, which I guess is a take of the Wima brand. Wuma. Okay, nice. So, in here. Right here, right here, right here. Oh, yeah. Okay, and instruction manuals. So, I shall try and build this here in front of you. So, yeah. Hi, everyone. It's me. So, it's a bit low, but then, well, you don't have the printer, not me. Oh. So, let's see. The first step. And here is the parts. Top frame, check. Z axis, check. Profiles, check. Extruder, check. Filament holder, check. Hotbed, check. Bottom frame, check. Display screen, check. Okay. This number one. And the first thing I'm going to do is get the last cat off here. Oh, shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Okay, last cat. This one you've seen before is Yaki. And where was it? Okay, building this. So let's see the first step. So, how does this work? Let's see. So, I'm going to go into this very calmly. I mean, I love doing DIY. Electronics, you know, building IKEA stuff, furniture. Eh, I mean, not right. Yeah, whatever. So, right. so, let's see. We'll go for this first. Well, this one is the top frame, bottom frame, Z axis, extruder. So, this is just the uh, arm. Oh, okay, so this is the the packs they come in, I guess. 
remove the parts from the box, remove any tape and paint from the parts, inspect the parts, make sure they're not damaged and shit and turn. Okay. Checked. Nice. Frame as part one. Install the aluminum extrusions. Okay, so we have how many screws we have? We got uh, 20 M5s, 4 M4s by 10s, 4 M4 by 8s, and 2 M5 by 6s. Okay, so let's see. The first tip is it's going to be the bottom frame, the extrusions, and screws. So, more cats. Bottom frame. There we go. There we go. And this can go in here. Somehow. I'm going to take a look at that. I want to see this. Okay. So, tools are here, parts are here. Let's find the screws then. And there's a cutting box one. Please, please. Card. Get out the screws. Card reader. Oh, come on. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's nice. It's nice of them. It comes with the fitting locks. Yeah, it's nice. Go for the print then. They are plastic injection molded, so they're not screwed really like that. So, here. Yeah. And the last bag of oil. Nothing else we've got in here. Some loose things. Yep. Yeah. And teacup. I wonder how useful this is. Well, let's put the open up. Okay. Screws. And here we go. And I need. Oh, they're, they're all mixed. Okay. Hang on. I'll go get something for the screws. And then the cats up here. Oh, come on, cats. Classic cat's repellent. It works. Okay. Something to hold screwed in. Plastic tray from some chocolate tears. Here's a You know when you say, oh, I'll keep this, this is going to be useful for something. Yeah, that's useful. For everything. Nothing but it. So, screws. Okay. Bags. And I think the cat just comes up already. things. Lovely things. Yeah. So. Let's see what else I We need eight pieces of the screws. Eight pieces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the and five screws. There we go. And we need as well the profiles, the extrudes. So this typical industrial wrap. Either I find them again or not. Oh, no, it's heat trip. It's heat trip. Oh. 
Okay, like that. This is really messy. I guess you would call it and it looks a bit squished and then we have all these marks up here they are they are marks so mm. let's see yeah, let's, this way it's okay oh dear no this is Mm. Well, it's better than the other one, at least. Yes. I was surprised for low cost printers. This one looks okay. Yep. Here we go. And the last one. Is. Fine as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, they are budget printers. You know. From what I've heard, Creati as a company, they're really pushing forwards. So I'm trying to understand the current mindsets. Cats, then I'll try. Okay, so the first step is to fill up the four extrusions, and as I've seen everyone mine, make sure you have the holes, the holes at the top. I guess that's not understanding from the pictures. It makes sense as well because the top frame is bolted onto this from the top and the side. So, prepare the following parts the base, okay? Screws, apron, washers. So, it says to prepare them separately, but they are already included. The little washers, the. Yeah, yeah there they are. So, that's done. Profiles and the four millimeter Allen key. Well, let's use their four millimeter Allen key. Let's have it. Cool. So we got one, two, three, four, five Allen keys. Three size spanners, well, one dual spanner and one single spanner, and the tiny little horrible looking flat head screwdriver. So, four, I'm guessing it's doing a four one, so I'm probably wrong, the usual. Yep. Here's a four. Well, at least they are. They have a nice little ball end. And. How long will they last? Who knows? Not like, it's not like I'm going to use them either because I have my own set. So, tools get, parts get. And it says check if the part B is complete. So, the four sides, okay. It's got two corner brackets, okay. It's got one control box, okay, and the four defense, okay. So, yeah. I shall take a seat.
Let me show my own. I'll be able to see it a bit better. Put the screws away. Because we're going to put this upside down. Or somewhere near to down. Okay. So we have the front of the printer and the rear of the printer. It has to be at all ends. Check the voltage. Check that again. 230 volts. That's correct here for me. Okay, not on top. <laughs> not front to back. And square the corners of the base. Okay. Oh, it's sticking together, is it? So, this is the back. At the back of the two lesser nice ones. So on this way. Okay, otherwise, they are nothing special. That's what it's supposed to be. Okay, so. Here we go. And it stands up. That's good. I don't trust it. And make sure that the holes are at the top. So, there we go. Uh, let's see. They are threaded already, which is important. So, there we go. We'll just start them up. Okay, so, here we go. So I don't know how long it's going to take me to get this stuff running, or how long it's going to take me to build the stuff. So I'm sure I've been slightly tight enough, you know, just a bit, even willing just a tiny bit, because I will hopefully square the frame up later once the top part is on. That's too tight. Just, just too tight. Tell you. And the other one that was damaged is this one. So, I'm not too fussed about that, but. Go with nice. So, a few more screws. There we go. Mm -hmm. okay, another one here. So basically, I'm doing this live stream just to try out the live stream feature. YouTube said they need to check my phone number or something. Okay. okay. Get up to 24 hours, 48 hours. Trading. So yeah, here I am streaming away, and uh, hoping to join the Ender community. And I chose the Ender Five because I like the structure more. I I have this is my third three D printer. I have a Rostock, 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 Max version 1 from CCNC. Ah, uh, I've upgraded it so much, so much love and effort into it. And there's just no way to print anything with a large base on it. So, I got my hands on a very slightly used Stratasys U print or up print. And I have completely refurbished the electronics to run with uh, the Rambo controller. I think it's a Ultimaker. And it runs nicely. Took me a long time to fine tune it though. 
It's a great build quality, you know, it's, uh, it's steel, steel frame, and overkill everywhere. Oh, it's an industrial piece of machine, machinery. It better be overkill. If the price is helpful. It's helpful. I think it's still do it. So, yeah, the main drawback with it was that the actual extruder is a DC geared motor and encoder. Got that sorted out, works quite nicely. But the filament path from the extruder motor, well, it's very short. It actually has a few issues with heat, heat creep, basically. And it's designed to run with their $200 filament, which has a melting point of 300 degrees. Same years. So, you know, it's a fixed temperature machine, but now I have it tuned with a uh, here. And I can set it up to 310 degrees. Uh, well, it's a typical 3D printer. But the filament just jams, especially when it softens up between the extruder. And the hot end. So I have my delta rostock, 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 and that has dual extruders as well with the J J head style. They weren't working. They were flat the base. Okay, so that's rounding it up for now. Next step. Here's the top part. Install the top structure. Mm, okay, fair point parts, the top part, and eight more M5 screws. We have the washers and the forming the um, um. Check if the part is complete. Where is it? Okay, so he did that away. Okay, so what we have here, and dust. So, I mean, the one is tiny, but this is light. This track assist is, uh, I think the head weighs two kilos. That's all on huge linear bearings, and the motor's the next size up, probably. But it does have a belt reduction. Okay, so I'm going to check this, and the belts. Ah, snagging on the sides of extrusion. Yeah. Well, that was expected. And, uh, yeah. Well, you know, it's cheap. So, check the parts. Four sides. Yes. Four corner brackets. One, two, three, four. Check. X and Y axis assembly. X axis limit switch, it's the X axis, this one, it is. Timing belt times three, one, two, three belts, okay, yeah. Uh, 40 20 dual motor installed, Y axis coupler and smooth rod. Y axis coupler and smooth rod times two, okay, so yeah, these two here. Smooth rod, okay. And the Y axis limit switch, which is over here. Okay, we have everything. Doesn't seem to have this one. Okay. Um, keep the front of the base facing you. Okay. 
move the hot mess into the position away from the outfit. Okay. So we put it over here and over here, I guess. And we just put it on top. Do you run away? Are you good? So, uh, nice. Mmm, wobbly. And just put the screws in. So top screws first. To get things aligned. So one. Two. Three. And four. So before you want this over, I pull them to the floor, which is wobbles apart. Let's just get one of them. Okay, one's in. Let's get the other corner up here. Okay, so we will be indeed a bit just you know. Okay, so now we need four more going to the side. Well, they should go to the side. What it says. So just a bit more again. Okay, so have I put this in properly or have I not? Is this where Evan says, be careful? So why isn't this lining up? There's a big gap. There's a big gap. So this one fits. Let's see if that one fits. This one fits, no problem. And this one here, so. For some reason, this hole is higher up than the hole in the extrusion. Yeah. This needs clearance of alcohol. So, does this fit through? So, as you can see, this is going in at a, you know, quite an angle, and it's not going in. So why is that? This is on top. It's probably on here. Do I have? Do I have them backwards, maybe? Was there any mention of this? Let's go back a page and mm -hmm. no. Okay, so well, it's just tightening them 
Okay, so let's tighten things up then. Okay, so let's see how long it takes for all the print to fall on the floor. And away we go. So, tighten this one. And tighten the other one. So the more I look at it, the more specks of hot glue filaments, do you can see. So well, we'll see about that. And as well, there's more little knocks, little scratches. And, um, okay. So, I have no idea if you're hearing me properly. I have no idea if there's any audio. This might be a silent movie. Come on. So, this isn't the best place to build a printer, I guess. I chose to do a live stream. I get the price for doing it on a whim. Who knows? Might even delete it afterwards. So I'm not going to mark too tight because it is aluminum, aluminium, whatever. And I don't know if I'd be able to strip the threads in the actual extrusions. All the screws. Probably none, hopefully, but you never know. Okay, so that's one, two, three done. One more to go. I think I was saying something earlier, and I stopped halfway through. Ah. Not the important thing is. Just hoping to have an actual functional 3D printer. Okay, the bottom parts are done, so let's go to the top parts again and tighten them down as it says. So not too tight either. But... Okay, yeah. Okay, they're lining up. They are lining up. There's still a gap though. There is still a gap. And it goes down the oh no 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 no. This one is not going on. This one is not going on. So why is that? Why? I wonder why. So let's go down here, tighten some down. Yep. And we'll put these in. Them. And the cats are behaving themselves extremely well. is great. Yeah. 
behaving extremely well in testing mode. Basically. Okay, so. Two more screws, but I can't put the last one in. This one over the end of free or the free pro because I prefer the built plate to not be moving constantly backwards and forwards. My personal preference. They both have their advantages. So, what am I going to do with this one? Let's see. If I can actually get the screw in, which is not going to happen. Let's turn it around then. So, let me go with this one. Screws definitely bite into the aluminum itself. So down they go. I mean, you don't want to over tighten them. You don't want to play around with them too much. It's not plastic, but. Yeah. It's an all 3D printer. Pretty sure that someone will try and build one of these printers with a cordless drill. Hopefully, not, not a power drill. But you never know. And hopefully, they just don't strip any threads. So, there's one screw out. And then, wait, oh, sorry. Do better. At least you can see something going on. So. Off with the extremes. I've never seen the promo video from Creati. And the way he actually assembles all the screws with just one finger. Okay, so I had these at the back, the new, these little nicks and marks, which you can see reflecting nicely the light. This piece of black black metal and now I'm forced to actually put this facing forwards and hoping that it lines up because ah Ugh. okay so I'm not sure if you can see this in here so you can see the hole up here and then just below, there's this little speck here. Tiny little thing there. You'll, eh. You'll think there. And that is where they started to drill the hole. So it looks like they missed on the first try. Now let's turn it around and put the ugly part facing forwards. Yeah. Not happy. No, 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 no. Okay. Life goes on. I mean, I guess I could always loosen these screws here and shift this down, but then it'll be messing up the belt positioning. 
So I know there's this, um, like a fancy version of how to build these machines, at least for the end of three. We have all sorts of tips and tricks. Now you should do this this way first, you should do that, leave a step last, uh, change this around. Uh, you know, it's nice. Uh, I guess most of the plans as well to this machine, at least the hot end part. Which, actually, looking at it, it comes with a silicon sock. Which is unexpected. Yeah, it comes with a nice little silicon sock. Nice. Okay, and I think I just broke it. Nice. Hold on. I did it. No. Whatever. It still holds. So let's tighten these two up again a bit more. And I'm completely out of frame. Okay, okay. Tighten up. So let's go to the top screen now, which I have lost already. Nick. And this is not lining up anymore. So it's this one on the top also has another spot where it seems like they've actually missed on the first try. So maybe the person that was drilling the holes, which I would assume that this is done by machines, like a CNC machine, but maybe it's done by hand. And it's done by hand, just missed. So I'm still having the same problem. I still cannot get this screw in. I cannot do the thing. Hmm. Actually, it's worse than before. And it's worse than before. Sorry, as it was worse than before. And I don't want to see the damaged part. Go back again. Change it around again. So for some reason as well, this is really pulling out. So I think it's not straight either. Ah, uh, uh. lefty Lucy, righty nighty. Which is fine when you're actually facing the screw, but when you're uh, on top of it, or behind it, or in front of it, but how you look at things as well, then uh, it's still, still is lefty loose and right, 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 right. Not that much. Okay. Around it goes again. I mean, I can't put this upside down, and it's threatened already. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to do anything. The show must go on somehow. I'm thinking of leaving this one loose down here and seeing if it helps. 
Don't see why I would, though. Maybe it's a problem of height. <sighs> Alas. All is lost. I was pouring the five. And I ordered from AliExpress, from the German that warehouse in Germany, um, and they sent it from the UK. We had plenty in stock. It took them four days to ship it. And when they did, they got the track number from the UK. No, and there's no way that this screws in. No way. Whatsoever. And the belt is touching. And uh, yeah, well, you know. Oh, that's, that's cheap. That's cheap. The actual end stop. The actual end stop on the X carriage is triggered by the wheel. That is unexpectedly cheap. Well, um, I guess I'll just leave that scrap for now. Here we are. Tighten this one down, make it tight. Yeah, it's tight. Let's get one last shot. Which I don't even know why I'm going to try. It's one of those things you say, oh, maybe I just try it, it'll happen, it'll work, it'll do, it'll fix. Let's try. We did. This is going very tightly. It's going in. And there's like two things going on. I am actually ripping the threads. Oh, it's going mm, I feel like I'm tapping a thread. So let's tap a thread. It's going in. It's going in. Okay, okay. Not good. Not bad. Not terrible. And it's in enough. Let's check these tightened down. Okay. Check the other side. Tight. Okay. Well, it's looking like a printer. Fancy that. Yeah. Next step is the fun part. So, another reason that I wanted to get this type of frame with the z-axis that moves up and down itself is that instead of pre of Maria, if there's issues of the bed actually wobbling when there's weight on it at the front up and down, because it's a flimsy piece of well, it's not flimsy, it's, I think it's steel, uh, and it's flexible, it bends, wobbles, I don't know, but you can either compensate on the other side with a pulley system. Or maybe you could actually mount, instead of mounting it at the back, you can mount it on the side with two of them. Don't know how feasible that would be, if it's worth the cost or not. But you know, it's kind of, you know, it's sort of thing to keep in mind. It's like the upgrade with the Ender 3, was it the CR10, maybe? That's something to have the double, the dual steppers, 
Xerxes. Yeah, something like that. You know, I like changing things. You know why. Okay, so. Frame assembly part three. Z axis frame assembly, which is part C. Prepare the following parts. The Z axis frame. Which is over here. And now the cats are sleeping. Here, one, two, one, here. I'm going to put away before the cats eat it. So, in the box of grips. Like a puzzle. It's a puzzle without parts. Me. And this is the part that I like the most and worries me the most. It is covered in grease. So before I can mess with it, let's tie it up a bit. Why not degrease it? Let's not degrease it completely. But consume that there are. Uh... Oh, sharp corners. Ow. Okay, I just cut myself with a piece of plastic from the motor connector. There's all like a PCB under it. No, it's just plastic. Ow. That's sharp. Careful. So. Yeah, this is going to be oiled, greased, something, you know, we expect it. These as well. But I'm, I'm guessing that for assembly purposes, these also greased as well. But, I mean, come on. This one has, like, whole smudge of it around it. Just give it a wipe. Yes, good. Get some dust and fluff off that will run themselves. Yeah, just tie it up a bit. You know, this is going to be a dust magnet in the future. Mm -hmm. And more sharp corners, which is expected. You just have to be aware of them. Be careful, not that they're there. So that's wiped up a bit. Go back to the drawing board or the assembly line. What do call it? More scratches. More missed holes. Maybe it's maybe they share parts of another printer and they pre mark them somehow. Okay. I mean doesn't affect it. More this like hot blue string stuff. Cat hairs, of course. Can't do that. And yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, more scratches. That doesn't matter. It's going to fix the thing. Back to business. Which 
which is the four screws. Keep the frame of the bottom of the frame Make your own the bottom of the frame of the bottom. Okay. Don't put it upside down. Okay. Thanks. I mean, I guess you could. You'll lose uh, travel, I guess. It also suggests that you can actually put the the heated bed on before putting it into the frame. But then I think it'll be actually more fiddly to put this into the frame. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it like this. And as expected the height adjustment screw is a height adjustment screw. And that's it. So this isn't nice and tight until you loosen it. It'll probably need my uh, nut on top to make sure it doesn't move. But then at the same time you have the end stop up here which has a little slot to move sideways not up and down. So I wonder how this is going to work out. We'll see. So, four screws. I have six screws left. Which is good, I can, I can count. So in it goes. Don't bash anything, don't scratch anything. Don't drop it. So, one screw, two screws, again, you know, just It's a lot lined up before tightening down too much. Just a habit of mine. And let's see how we can align the bottom ones. How? Let's see. Is this going in? Yeah, it's going in. Wibbly wobbly. Okay, so that's the screw in. Any particular instructions to follow? No. So, tighten them up. Okay, still got quite a way to go in here, so. Side. I mean, the overall construction is simple, the assembly is simple. In total, it's 30 screws. So it's been one hour already, just over an hour. And step three. Okay. 
Yeah. And I'd really like to have a racketing, 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 whatever you call it. Allen key here, but I shall stick to using what came in the box. Okay, so they are all taken down. And yeah, it's not bad. So, as you can see, this has no support at the top, but we're moving it fast. It does not wobble, which is very nice. Yep. Okay, and it hits the end stop. Ooh, that's loose. Whatever. There we go. Okay. We shall continue. Let's back a bit. I got the feeling that the light isn't quite right. Uh, best point, maybe? Hope so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, mounting the hotbed, which uses four M4 screws. With the three millimeter Allen key. Okay, nothing special here, just make sure it's flat and nice and tight. Before installation, we must check whether the hotbed components are complete, whether the hotbed is flat, and whether the platform plate is tilted. So it's telling you already to check if the bed is flat. So let me get, let me grab something. Do. So I've got the bed, it's over here. Grab the level, spirit level, whatever you want to call it. And let's see. I know that I'm not going to be using the magnetic bed much. I really like to print with ABS. I like to make functional parts. But if this machine works nicely with PLA, then we shall see. So it looks flat here. Yeah. Seems fine to me. Until we heat up. So, checklist. There's to check if it has the help there. Okay, yep. Flat for board. Yes, sir. Hot spring. Hot spring. Hot spring. For them. So, this one has the yellow springs. Which, from my understanding, are the newer version, the stronger ones. I guess they work. Yeah. Yeah. So here, bed. And 
large leveling nut. So these are called large leveling nuts, which is fine. So yeah, check that. Okay. And we need the screws and the allen key. So we'll wait here for a second. Get these out of the way. And we shall find screws. Here, twenty-four here, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-six screws. I know what the options are for. There we go. So these are M4s. Am I supposed to be here? M4s, M4 by tens. M4 by tens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight of them. And I need four of them. Yes, four of them. So let us begin the operation. So there's six there are six holes. Six threaded holes, and we need to install four screws in a row. So all in line. I wonder what the other holes are for. So here we go. And this goes on top. So let's find that tool. And three allen key. Three, three millimeters, three notes, not an entry. So, and where we go. Let's see how this is going to go. Holds in one screw, but you know. It feels like it could be done better. Okay, so two of the ring. Very loosely, slightly tightened down. Let's put down the other two. These are easier. The last one. So I'm wondering what these last two are for. Tighten up. Tighten up. Tighten up. And tighten it up. Okay. Ooh, it feels nasty. It feels as nasty as I expected it to. This is very, very not nice. Yeah, well, you know. 
it was expected. I don't think extra screws help because it's metal structuring. Yeah, these rods, smooth rods, are exactly big. So are these frames as well? Where are they going? They're going to that bottom. And, uh, Feels a bit better. I mean, it's just you know, try it. Uh, I don't know. If that screws left over, I'll put them in there. Yes, they probably need screws left over. Okay, so that's done for them being tightened down. Okay, so now we're on to the display extrude assembly, rack assembly. Prepare the following parts the display. Extrude assembly, rack assembly. What is the rack assembly? Ah, the rack assembly is the filament holder. So let's what should we start with? Let's start with the display. Which is over here. Let's bring these last two parts back. Let's do that. And the display. It's kind of made not a film. PSD protective bag okay, like. and how they got this into the bag is something else. Display, empty bag, useful for electronics. Well, it's a bag if I break for anything. So the T slot nuts, or whatever you want to call them. The graphic display. Well the knob's nice. Yeah, it's well, that's nice. Yeah. It's not so nice. So it's still the front of the machine. This is, you know, what you see. Uh, whatever. Whatever. So what do I need to mount this? What do I need? Tell me. Instruct me. Just to use the three millimeter Allen key. Size down, which I guess is this. two. Yeah, it's it's two. So that's wrong. Double check that. Yeah, it's telling me to use the three millimeter Allen key and the four millimeter Allen key, and that will not help. So let's make sure that these have some space in them. And one goes horizontally into 
Well, it could at least tell you how which direction to put them in. So we get them together like this. And this just slips on over here. I'm assuming. Which is dangerous. And let's turn around. And let's see some turn around. Okay, so the first thing I'm noticing is that they aren't spinning around. So I have to loosen them quite a bit and then tighten them down again. And the same with the bottom one. So you need to loosen it up. Not too far, because we do it too far, I'll have to pop it off again. And fish things out. So, okay. And do it turn around now. Oh, bummer. Let's try again. So, loosen it first. It turns around. Or not. Okay, it's round. It's round. And we've lost the other one. You win some, you lose some. So we lose it again. Okay, this is this is this is fiddly. If, it's, if there's too much friction, it won't turn. So whatever, just plug it. Get in there. What do you do? I think the print. I want to print things. And to print mechanical things, assemblies, enclosures. So I, I've been struggling away with my other two hour printers for two and a half years. For two and a half years, I've been struggling with the printers. Get them up and running somehow. I have failed. So I gave up. I have all this. I don't know. Let's see what happens. I have high hopes. Let's see if the hype is real. Okay, so the display is installed. It doesn't say anything about connecting the cable yet. It's probably afterwards, yes. So, the next step is the extruder motor. Extruder stepper motor. So we loosen these up a bit. Let's see as far as I can go. And... There we are. So this... Goes vertically, and this is what I like about the system is that you know it's, it's extrusions you can put where you want. You can put it inside, outside, upside down. Well, you know, within reason, you want it to work. So these are these are four millimeters. So here we go. Uh, yep. So actually, I'm going to do the bottom one first. And as soon as that one actually catches, I don't really care. It's like I can't see it. Oh, no, I don't mind. So it's just been for that 18 millimeters. 18, yes. So let's follow the book. Find a ruler. It doesn't come in one. PCB ruler from a trade fair in Hong Kong, I think. Or Shenzhen. Hong Kong, yeah. So, 
Let's see, 18 millimeters, 8 centimeters. Which according to this is like two, nearly three inches. Just, just over three inches. Eh, so I'm way down. I'm way down. It says 18 millimeters from the top. So I'm way down. Okay, so we need to go up. So, loosen a little bit, just a tiny bit. And as well. So, 80, 80s here. Okay. Okay, so in its place and in its place. Tighten it a bit. Tighten it a bit. Eh, a little left. So next step is the spool holder, as it says. The rack assembly. I mean, you can actually build this printer without an instruction manual. Maybe not the most optimum way, but I'm sure you can do it. So we have this part here, for the instructions. It says that the hexagonal part goes outside, but not. And I'm missing the screw, which I guess is the filament holder nut. So I have the filament holder nut, which is called the rack tube nut in the instruction manual, but is labeled as the rack tube nut. So, it goes. I was expecting to be you know, like an actual screw, but you know, just a twist. Yeah. Hey, it works. So, 150 millimeters approximately from the bottom. From the from the ground, from the ground, from, from the table itself. So it's just mounted here, but I have the urge to mount it here. But I shall follow instructions and it's a it later as I wish. And this one uses the four main ones. So. Here they are, these little things. Loosen them as far as you can. And this way, it's easier to put them inside. Right here. If they're, if they're nicely designed, you can actually loosen the screw completely and they won't pull out. You seem to be able to, but as I mentioned before, I think the spin inside is going to be something else. Eh. Iffy. So as loose as it can go, eh, it will look around. And. Probably a stick. Come on. Is that work?
or why not? Pun intended. Is it... Is there a problem with it? They are symmetrical, so it shouldn't matter which way they go in, but just in case. Uh, turn it 180 degrees and try again. Please try again. So from the bottom one goes in quite easily. Top one. It doesn't work. Why not? So it kind of starts to twist. Like stops. Very bad. Let's try again. So I've used this at work plenty of times. Mac Master car ones. Probably expensive, but you know, they work. So Does it fit physically? Yes, it physically fits. Well, we'll see. Try again. It's these little small things that we really slow down. Okay. Oh, whatever. If you don't want to do one, spend the money. So 150 millimeters, and this just barely reaches it. So it's fine. Demo, and we shall get done. And hopefully, nothing has moved our place. So that's that one done. Tighten them up. Okay. Next step. We have finished on page eight for now. All parts listed have been installed. 
and it continues on the next page. What do So let's see. Hang on a second. Can we do anything here? 